These are the um, four inch copper baffles for the stainless uh, condenser jacket now that I'm building, my product condenser for my large still. Uh, they've been laid out exactly the same as the two inch uh, baffles I made in my two inch combo still video. I've just taken, peeled the paper off them. Um, you can see I've scribed out my uh, circumference uh, for the inside of the uh, stainless steel ferrule. About 98, 98 millimeters. It's a little about a half a mil to a mil over what it needs to be. But that's cool. I can very, very gently sand that back to a tolerance fit. Again, same as the combo still video. The idea of screwing it to a board is that um, this uh, copper sheet, although this one's quite thick, uh, doesn't get warped or butchered by throwing it through the drill. It keeps it nice and nice and flat and mint. Back on my four-inch condenser here again. Um, that's the top of it. I've uh, welded the ferrule onto the onto the tube. I've got my my socket for my um, my elbow out outlet, my uh, inlet down the bottom there. And what I've done is uh, ground the inside of this, ground the in anywhere that the weld blew through. Uh, I don't purge the inside with um, argon when I'm tigging, so uh, I occasionally get a bit of uh, what's called sugaring come through. Um, I just uh, rip that back with the, the uh, electric die grinder and then uh, with a flapper disc or a, a wheel on there um, and, and take it back and see there it's nice and it's got a bit of a tooth on it which is what I want to, to um, solder the internals into there Those, these are the ones for my product condenser I want quite a bit of reasonable amount of space around the, the tubes for, um, for, for coolant to flow for the uh, product condenser uh, it's got a lot more, more length obviously than the deflagmator so um, and there are the tubes for it there's uh, 16 in, in this one uh, so uh, I've just been uh, cutting them to length and rather hacksawing stuff nowadays I've been recently just been using a, a pipe cutter I've, I've been against pipe not against pipe cutters but I, I, I've never uh, really used one uh, because I've seen some of the results when I've had pipe cut places before that I've bought and I'm assuming now um, that it's just down to uh, blunt blades people get complacent with the blades and some of the uh, plumbing outfits yeah cutting them with this makes it a lot faster a lot easier than, than using the, the hacksaw because I don't, I don't have a, a, a bandsaw metal cutting bandsaw here I just have a hacksaw so uh, this is a lot faster and a lot, a lot cleaner and a lot more uh, a lot more accurate the uh, baffles and the cooling tubes all lined up uh, it's a bit of a bit of wrangling to get it there. Uh, so I'm going to, going to solder the top of these again, just the same as same as in my um, combo steel video, the, the uh, reflux condenser and the uh, product condenser I did in that. It's just a, a slightly different scale and, and more tubes, which makes it <laughs> a lot more interesting to wrangle into place. So now I've just got to fit uh, my core of my uh, one meter long product condenser into my jacket. Uh, I need to do a little bit of work and just hone down the edge here uh, to fit inside the ferrule. It's going to be pretty close to the top of the ferrule uh, either end, or the baffle that is. Um, I've made them slightly oversized so I've just got to sit there on the on the belt sander and whittle them down until they'll fit inside there. Uh, other thing I've done is, is a little bit of uh, silver solder around the outside there, pre-soldered it. Um, what I'm going to be doing is popping this into here in a bit and then soldering it in place, heating up the outside of the jacket and uh, getting the, the solder to stick to both the, both the stainless that's been toothed and the, um, the baffle. Uh, for the entrance on the bottom with inlet on the bottom, uh, one of these parts of the pattern so it's to force water through into the cooler. So my inlet will be adjacent to one of these these gaps here um, to the, yeah, will force water through into the core of the um, cooler, the jacket here um, and it, it, when it comes out it will come out at the top in between one of these patterns here but this, where it comes out is, is not as important as how it comes in I want to make sure it enters the jacket and goes straight through into the core and then it can do whatever it wants, cavitate, find its way up to the top. So this is my uh, jacket with the core inserted. It's got about five mil from the end 
Uh, same on the other end. If I more from the edge of the, uh, the edge of the jacket, I probably should have pushed it back a bit further, gave it a 10 mil or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm going to get solder around here now uh, and give it quite a quite a nice little meniscus of solder uh, between the uh, stainless jacket and the copper baffle, the copper tubes. Uh, notice that the, the inlets on these ones um, are quite quite close to the end, which is cool. The cool thing with making a stainless jacket, um, you don't have to worry about you know, soldering uh, soldering the, the fitting on and interfering with the soldering for the ferrules. It's the neat thing with TIG welding, you just bung them on, you can get them nice and close, so it's going to have the full length of that uh, with cold water running through it. And oh, the other cool thing here, I picked up second hand, dirt cheap, was uh, this little fella here, which is a uh, chiller, chiller unit. So fill that up with water, it's got a compressor, condenser underneath there, chills the water, it's got a little pump in the centre there, it can uh, spit out um, quite a bit of the water out of there, you can see the, the cooling coils and such in the middle there. Um, I can hook that up to a product condenser like uh, on this little, little still here or on my big still here and just have super chilled water getting piped straight into there. What I've done on the inside of this is I've tinned the ferrule and uh, I think you saw it, I'd run a, a bead of, of uh, solder around the outside of the baffle, same on both ends, um, slid the core in here and then heated the outside until I started getting them merging together and then just helped it around with a bit of uh, silver solder wire until um, I got a nice meniscus in there. I've got a bit of cleaning up to do where I've splashed solder over the, over the edges but um, that's basically where that, that is now. Uh, I had a lot of people ask me about um, soldering, low temp solder um, copper to stainless and it is a pain in the ass, it takes a while to get used to it. Um, it's very, very temperature dependent and if you blow over the temperature a little bit, uh, go a bit too hot, you end up burning your flux and, and uh, that generally does happen. All you can do at that stage is walk away from, let it cool down a bit, um, hit it with uh, some cleaner, clean, clean everything up, give it a sand and hit it with some acetone again. Um, I just use I'm not, not plugging brands or anything, I just use this stuff here, it's just an a all-purpose household cleaner that's quite good. It um, takes water solid of stuff off uh, and it removes any flux and residues very, very quickly. That's just a general purpose flux. Uh, the thing you want to look for is um, if you're getting, trying to find a flux, it, it's, it's a, a heavily corrosive flux, you've got to wash everything thoroughly afterwards and um, watch yourself. Uh, uh, it's not going to my, my fantastic camera is not going to focus there. Um, it's got an acid base, zinc chlorides, um, and we'll mention somewhere on the bottle, uh, there we go, stainless steels. Don't breathe it, whatever you do. Uh, I put it on hot, and, and a lot of people will as well. You get your job underway, and you'll need to reflux it at some stage. You'll get a plume of hot acid vapour coming off. Um, if you catch a beak full of that, you're going to be screwed. Another reason I'm using uh, low temp solder a lot is I can use just map gas. Propane's cool, um, map gas has a little more grunt. Uh, I don't need an oxyacetylene kit. Um, the bottles in New Zealand are expensive to hire um, and the head the headgear for a, a um, oxyacetylene kit is really expensive. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, they're nice, I'd love one. And the next step uh, is pressure testing it because you don't want to find that there once you're mid-distillation. <laughs> um, I always pressure test stuff whether I'm doing it for myself or uh, other people, especially if I'm doing it for other people. Um, for this, this exact reason, I've got a little leak here, I've got a couple of leaks around here. Um, I'm going to have to address now. That's um, going to be a case of um, flipping it back a little bit and uh, sanding it, cleaning it with acetone, and then um, resoldering. See if we can get rid of that. 
what I usually do is I um, for something like a condenser or a deflagmator, I set it up like this. I usually have the, these um, tails and, and taps on one part of it anyway. Um, have the water run through it for a little while. Make sure I've got no um, no bubbles in there that can uh, start working out of compression, and then cut that in, and that's when you start finding out where all your leaks are. Um, I'll leave that once it's fixed. I'll do that, set it up exact, exactly the same again, and leave it to sit for an hour. And uh, generally, if it's sat for an hour under pressure like that, and there's no leaks, make, I make sure the faces are all very, very dry. Um, and if there's no leaks after an hour or so, I think that's uh, a pretty bloody good sign. So, I'll pull this apart and fix my errors. Here is the uh, result of uh, what came out of that um, mess with the, uh, I think the last clip you saw was a failed attempt at silver soldering uh, the baffle into, into this jacket. Uh, I tried re-soldering it and I ripped the, ripped the uh, ferrule off and re remade it again and still couldn't get that join to take. I think um, there's, there's a number of factors involved in it uh, and I've done a lot of su successful copper to stainless joins before uh, with soft solder. Uh, I think the biggest factor is the heat. Um, the matte gas with, with the number of tubes I've got in here uh, and the, the amount of copper, this is a, a three, three millimeter thick baffle. The number of the, these tubes and the, the size of that, um, that jacket and the fact that the baffle and everything is so close to this edge of the ferrule. Um, normally I, if I'm, I'm building these, and I've built a number of these four inch, uh, similar four inch um, condensers for people, the um, baffle is, is down here somewhere and then the inlet below that. So there's there's room for heat to build up and get a sign of it. With this way, with it so close to this edge of the ferrule, which is where I like it, uh, it's where I want the baffle to sit. The heat is just wicking away down there, and the map gas that I use for silver soldering can't keep up. Keeps up fine for four inch, uh, for, for two inch, um, and it keeps up fine for four inch. Perhaps where I've used thinner baffles, um, less less tubes of three quarter inch, say half dozen three quarter inch tubes and set the, the baffle back, but, but not in this configuration. I tried it twice and uh, just, I was just tearing my hair out. Ended up rage quitting for a, for a few weeks. Um, but now I've got it to work. And how did you do that, I ask, you ask? Um, this joint round here is silicon bronze. And from now on, and my new mantra is I silicon bronze all my stainless to copper joints. I don't silver solder anything. Um, I would love to uh, be able to uh, high temp uh, silver braids, like with uh, Pro Silver, um, Silfos, or Pro Silver, say 34 or something. Um, but I've only got the map gas. I don't have an oxyacetylene kit, so um, I'm not going to be able to get the heat in there to do that. Uh, I can't get the heat in there to, to get the um, soft solder joint to take. I'm certainly not going to do it with be able to do it with uh, high temp silver brazing. So yeah, um, this is a, a wee condenser, a reflux condenser down here that I've done as a test, and, and um, that's been uh, silicon bronze brazed around the top there. Well, actually, silicon bronze brazed as a, as a test. Um, I made a, made a number of tests down there, um, but I uh, silicon bronze brazed the uh, brass crux nut onto the copper jacket. Um, and uh, silicon bronze brazed the um, the fuel onto the the pipe, and uh, it comes up quite nice. And then afterwards, I soft solder the copper copper joints, same as I've done in here. I've uh, done all the high temp stuff, attached the ferrule with the weld, um, silicon bronze brazed, and then soft solder last for the the, the lowest temperature. And uh, in case anyone's asking, or, uh, I think I mentioned it in one of my other videos, why the hell would you bother going to all that trouble messing around with 
the similar metal joins, uh, copper to stainless. Um, there's two reasons for interstilling. Uh, one uh, is the copper alcohol vapor contact. You get rid of sulfides, there's all sorts of um, sort of mystical guru stuff around it, but the, the one I know chemically is that you can remove some of the sulfides from your alcohol uh, with the copper alcohol contact. Um, the second one is this stuff is a lot more efficient than the stuff as a heat exchanger. Your copper is, depending on, on what you know, kind of copper or what kind of stainless and different factors and who you, whose book you read um, or who, whose figures you look at, copper is 15 to 20 times more efficient as a heat exchanger than stainless steel. It's not double, not 10 times, 15 to 20 times more efficient uh, as a heat, uh, when used in a, as a heat exchanger. So um, I want copper wherever I'm going to suck heat out or put heat in, like with this little reflux uh, condenser down here. I should have gone more dense with him, but like I say, it was a, this was the quick test before I um, went ahead and blasted this thing out. There's actually a third reason uh, I go with this, uh, with, with copper internals and a stainless jacket, rather than copper internals and a, and a copper jacket. This is this is kind of a bit excessive, exorbitant. Is the price? Uh, the copper is generally uh, five times more expensive than the stainless. Um, so if you're doing this stuff and you've got an economy of scale in mind, as I have, I mean I'm scavenging around junkyards and stuff for what I can cobble together. Um, stainless is cheap, <laughs> I wouldn't say cheap full stop. The copper is way more expensive, uh, even even scrap weight. The, the stainless comes in um, just per kg scrap weight, uh, comes at a lot, a lot lower than, than copper. Uh, this thing, now it's finished, weighs a, a ton. Well, not literally, but it's heavy. Um, and that's without being full of water. <laughs> so once that's hanging off my um, uh, uh, hanging off my still, uh, that's going to be a hell of a lot of weight off centre. So much so that I've ended up welding a couple of um, fixtures on the top of my um, still column head. Uh, and I'll be able to suspend it from a uh, beam on the ceiling. Uh, so the weight of that will be all that crap hanging off my uh, oh crap, all my, my carefully crafted accessories uh, will be suspended off the ceiling and not off the still on um, hanging off the top of Bronhilde here eventually um, she's built like a brick proverbial uh, that's not going to be a problem um, that could take a lot of force that's very very thick steel here but off the top of uh, this little 120 200 um, that's not as not as thick it's probably going to be putting a fair bit of force around here if I solely tried to, to load that up the column with the um, the condenser off to one side and that would be a, ca a massive cantilever too because the condenser is going to be pulling down out here so it may actually become unstable on the feet there um, once I once I get some height out of this thing So there you are, it's, uh, that's done and dusted. Um, there's a bit of paint involved. Uh, I've got some some new new uh, tools in the box with uh, silicon bronze brazing and a new mantra of uh, using silicon bronze for every single copper to stainless join that I do. Within reason. <laughs> I'll catch you, uh, my next video will probably be um, clipping this whole thing together and uh, doing a reflux run uh, with my new copper column there and my new uh, reflux condenser and my, my new product condenser. See you then.